Hey guys, welcome back to another video. So in this video, we are going to show you in six steps how to plan, build, and finance your off-grid solar setup for your school bus conversion, van conversion, or whatever it may be. So by the end of this video, you will know all of the parts and pieces that you need for your solar setup, what every single piece does and how it works together, and get a first-hand account of our solar setup that we've been using for the past three and a half months since we moved into the bus. Before you watch this video, if you haven't seen our other solar video, or if you don't know what watts, volts, and amps are, you're not familiar with some of the terminology, just go check that one out real quick. We'll be here when you get back. If you wanna do the super easy route, our setup is tried and true, and we've been using this one for three and a half months now. We're just gonna kinda of package it and include it in the description. I'll link to Amazon, exactly what we got. So, first, how much power are you going to need? Well, I guess the real question there is, how do you measure the power? And that's, I think, the, the first problem that I ran into was how do I figure out how much my appliances actually use? And it was such a disappointing realization yeah. when I realized I couldn't have AC, I couldn't have my big TV, I couldn't have all these things I really wanted because just the amount of power that they're gonna consume. So what we did was we either added the amperage and the voltage together, just read them off the back of the appliance, and that tells you the wattage, or you can use the... Um, Super cool kilowatt. Right? Yeah, the kilowatt on Amazon also. Uh, it's like 15 so cool. bucks. Yeah, you just plug in your appliance to that and it, it tells you the exactly wattage. how many watts. Yeah. Um, so if you remember back from our other video, watts are measured in hours. So we kind of had to consider which appliances were going to be on all day and which we were just going to be using for short bursts of time to break down the wattage. That we which explains need. the slash day that we have here on our chart. Um, that means we've already figured out how many hours we're going to be using it that day. Yeah, because the coffee grinder, even though it uses higher wattage, it, we only use it for a small amount of time. So it's not really that big of a pull from the solar panels. All right, so one more thing that you're going to learn about quickly if you haven't already is surges. Whenever you turn on an appliance, it always kicks on and requires about twice as much power, sometimes three times as much power as it does to run and operate. Step two, how much sun are you going to get and how powerful is the sun where you're located? Anywhere in Colorado, you're at least a mile above sea level. Yeah. So you're guaranteed to have a thinner atmosphere. Yeah. And obviously the higher up you go in the mountains, the thinner the atmosphere gets and the more potent the sun will be. So if you want to go look up where you can find out how potent the sun is where you live, we were just doing some research and found this website, um, which we'll link in the comments below. Actually, we'll probably put it up on the screen right there for you. But it's a natural renewable energy laboratory and it has it all broken down for the potency basically of the sun all across the United States. And that'll help you if you're trying to plan a trip for, for travel and trying to get the most amount of solar or if you just are curious about where you're located and how much solar how much you power get. You're gonna yeah. get. Yeah. Um, that's a lot to be considered because you could buy a 100 watt solar panel and never see 100 watts come out of that solar panel because you're never getting full sun potential. Yeah. So step three, building your battery bank. So the amount of sun you're going to get during the day really has a lot to do directly with the size of a battery bank you're going to need. All right, so once you get that grand number, ours is right here, about 2750 to 3000 watts per day that we're going to need, you need to get a battery bank that will support that. The way to figure out how many watts the battery can store is you multiply the voltage by the amperage. Once again, we'll do our full setup. Three 12 volt batteries at 125 amp hours is 4,500 watts for our complete setup. So we feel comfortable with that number. Make sure you get a number that you feel comfortable with. Obviously don't undersell yourself. No, definitely not. <laughs> Make sure you, you wanna have more power by far than underpower yourself. So step number four, you are gonna have to do a little bit of math to figure out how many solar panels you'll need. This is where people get lost a lot and I sort of got lost myself, but what you have to do, follow me on this. We'll put the math up on the screen, feel free to pause. Take your total wattage that we just figured out, which is 4,500 watts. That's how many watts you'll need to charge your batteries up completely. Divide that by the amount of hours on average that you're gonna be getting sunlight. So we figured about 10 hours a day that we get sunlight and that will be the number of watts that you'll need to put on the roof to charge your battery bank. For us, it ended up being 450 watts that we'll need coming from the sun to charge the batteries within 10 hours. 450 watts of solar energy times 10 hours a day equals okay. 4,500 watts, and that's what you will need to charge our Math. battery bank. Math. So that's how you figure out how many solar panels you're gonna need, is you figure out how many watts you'll need to charge your bank in one day's time. So with that math being done, uh, I did that a while ago and we kind of, I don't know why we didn't just do it from the start, but we only got four solar panels. And if you do the math, we need 450 watts. And we never really see 400 watts because 
well, you'll know once you start building the system that you never really get the full amount of watts that it says you're going to. You have loss in cables, the sun's not always out, there's atmospheric interference, there's everything. So we really want to get at least two more solar panels yes. uh, and get 600 potential watts Soon. up there so that we can juice the batteries before a couple of days if it's not beautiful sun. Yeah, and be able to not have to compromise between what things we can charge. And because there are yeah. some times where we can't use both laptops or can't charge yeah. both laptops, so it'd be nice to be able to just charge everything when we need to. Exactly. So step five, the heart of your solar setup, your solar charge controller. <laughs> All right, so this guy bridges the gap between your solar panels and your batteries. You can't just plug solar panels into batteries because what happens is the battery will fill up and it'll keep filling up because nothing's saying stop feeding me power and it'll keep filling up and it'll either explode or it'll leak or it's no good, it's not good. So you can't do that. You have to have a solar charge controller um, which I use an MPPT solar charge controller. Is that what um, connects to us in the bedroom? Is that the yeah, same that's actually, I'm glad you said that, babe, because we have this really cool panel mounted on the wall in the bedroom that shows us all of our solar output, how many kilowatts we've created, our battery at the time. Um, we really like that, and that actually came with this 40 amp MPPT solar charge controller. Yeah, so it takes the, the power that's coming in and regulates how much your batteries are actually going to get and then make sure they get a full charge. It also has the on-screen display that tells you um, what's going on with your batteries. You can get solar charge controllers that don't tell you anything, they just have lights. And I didn't want that. I wanted, I wanted to know everything, More especially if you're living in it. Exactly. How to figure out what size solar charge controller you're going to need, that's kind of difficult. And that, I didn't realize, and I could have easily caught this bus on fire by not knowing what size solar charge controller to get. Yeah. Um, so if, you just you go, <laughs> if you just go buy one willy-nilly and you have no idea what amps you need, then you could, you could easily set something on fire back there. So, figure out how many amps you need. And the way to do that is kind of work backwards from the math that we did. If you take 4,500 watts and know that you have 12 volt, then you can do that math and the remainder is how many amps you have. So ours ended up being about uh, 38 amps, so I ended up getting a 40 amp solar charge controller. And the amp, once again, if you, if you haven't seen that other video, go watch it now. The amps are the flow of electricity. So when you're doing it, round up. Yours is actually 37.5, <laughs> so. Round it up from 37.5 to 40 amps, um, and that's a safe bet. And if you add something to your system, keep that in mind. You can't just add it to the same solar charge controller. You have to get a new solar charge controller to regulate that. Step six. So this now, is an exciting one. it is an exciting one. You have the juice. What are you supposed to do with it? Yeah, we have all that power. 4,500 watts sitting in those batteries. It's a lot of power. But from how, the sun. how, how cool do you that? get it? Yeah, all from the sun. <laughs> it's a really gratifying feeling the it first really time is. you charge your phone off the solar energy. It feels great. It's still awesome and blows my mind every day, but <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, how do you get all that power to your devices? Well, there's two different ways AC, DC. AC is what's used in, in houses, and it actually runs at at least 120 volts, which is super hot, we'll say. Um, and DC is what you're gonna find with a battery off-grid setup, and that runs between 12 and 24 volts. What do we have that's AC? We have our computers we plug in through AC, our coffee grinder, our some of our lights are AC. Mm -hmm. So anything that plugs into like a normal house it. plug. Is that it? Oh, and like uh, batteries, like camera batteries. So the other one's DC. So anything that has the cigarette lighter plug or just a red and a black cable, like our fridge. It's just a red and a black cable coming out of the back. So I had to run that directly to the batteries. You can't just plug that into the wall. You would, don't do that, you will electrocute yourself. Don't do that. Don't do that, it's DC. How do you get the power from the battery up front to the charge strip? For AC, you have to use a power inverter. Oh, and that's yeah. what the thing is in the back. That's is 1100 watts. And in order to figure out the size of a power inverter you need, you just have to figure out how many AC appliances you have. We just listed ours. And so our total AC wattage is right there. And so we got a power inverter that's capable of taking much more than what we need. And when you buy the inverter, this is when we got to go back to the surges. This is what will surge. You have to make sure your power inverter has a surge limit higher than what your potential surge is. So that's how you get AC uh, through a power inverter. An inverter just means it takes DC and converts it to AC. So the way we did our DC power, which we have our fridge, the USB charging thing by the window. The water pump. The water pump. I think that's it right now. Fuses, um, if you're not familiar with the fuse, all it is is, is is something that goes into the line of electricity and is regulated to a certain amount of amperage. It has a thin wire in it, which has been measured to break if it exceeds that amperage. So that's all there is. This wire that will break if it exceeds an amperage so that it doesn't short out anything. So it's literally just a safety precaution. Fuses are, 
are just to make sure that things aren't, aren't getting or feeding too much electricity. So we have a DC fuse block in the back and that was really gratifying to hook up. It was really fun. Bonus tip. <laughs> um, whenever we notice that our solar juice is a little low, our first thing to do is always go check the solar panels and make sure they're clean. And now we've just gotten into the habit of cleaning them like every two days or after a snowstorm if they've gotten dirty. So we just go up there with some Clorox and paper towels and they are really dirty and the solar power juice goes up so right much. away. Yeah. Right, right when they get clean. Mm -hmm. So make sure those are clean. Don't forget. Don't forget. Clean your panels. So they get really nasty. All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching Thank again. Thank you very much for watching. Yeah, we um, we are blown away every day with the amount of subscribers, how many people are behind us, and just thank you. You guys are yeah. awesome. So yeah. stick around. We're going to keep trying to make these awesome videos for you. Keep coming up with ideas for us. Yeah, subscribe, like, share. All, all the, the good, good stuff. stuff. <laughs> um, all right, well, we're going to go have a little movie, movie night. night. Go watch so, all the Star Wars before the news. I hope that we so. cops don't bust us at our new location, but it's really hard to say. Okay, bye. All right, bye, guys. <laughs>